I wanted to change the gears a little bit okay. and bring this conversation to actual practice. So we've given candidates a lot of context, yeah. but now what do they actually do? So the way I wanted to phrase this, the way I want to bring this to this episode, because it is a podcast episode, despite the fact that we're talking uh, to each other. Yeah, that's what, what are we the, do in our podcast, isn't it? It is. <laughs> what are the elements of a perfect preparation? Perfect is a heavy word, Julio, but we'll try. Okay, yeah. Well, we're <laughs> not doing the preparation. Yeah. yeah, no, let, let's do it. Uh, I think the one, the first thing is if you're preparing specifically for case math, mm -hmm. right? And actually, let, let me preamble this. When should you prepare for case math? Mm -hmm. uh, in my view, I don't know if you disagree with me or not. Uh, you first need to learn how to solve cases and not worry too much about any specific part. Yeah. Then for most people, you should focus on your structure because that's how you start the case. That's what most questions within the case are. Mm -hmm. And also within the context of consulting, uh, it doesn't matter if you can do math or not, if you can structure the problem first and find out what math you need to do, right? Perfect. Uh, and then you should worry about math once you find out that you have either of these issues that you, you mentioned. Right. I can structure it up front. I make arithmetic mistakes that I can't catch. I don't understand what the number means. Uh, at the end, I get lost. Yeah. However, for some people, people who know that they're not really good at math mm -hmm. uh, or even case math, then I think you should start preparing for that a little bit earlier. Yeah. In parallel with the other stuff. Mm -hmm. Right, because that you know that's going to be a, a, a roadblock already. Yeah. So, so yeah. So given that, I mm -hmm. think the first thing you need is techniques. And the ones that I, the ones that I think are most important at first is structuring techniques for case math problems. So forget all the math that you've seen elsewhere. It doesn't have anything to do with GMAT math, with GRE math, SAT math, uh, school, university, case math. Mm -hmm. Learn techniques to structure those things. Be and it's different from all the others because all the others is just formulas, mm -hmm. right? It's just, uh, oh, this is the formula for quadratic equations. Use yeah. it, right? Yeah. This is the formula for sine and cosine and... Yes. Tangents, whatever. So what do you mean by techniques for structuring? Well, one is if I give you a business problem that has some math in it, mm -hmm. can you create an equation out of that? Okay. And it's not about knowing business formulas, as we mentioned. Like mm -hmm. maybe one or two of them are useful, but you should be able to do it even if you don't know any business formulas. Like can you structure them into an equation? Okay. Mo like multiplying signs, dividing signs, addition, subtraction. And if I give you a more complex problem that would probably need like 10 variables, 15 variables, you probably won't be able to do an equation out of it. Uh, but then can you do a step-by-step -step, uh, structure? Yeah. So the first step is get to this number. I'm going to do this equation, this small equation to get to this number. And mm -hmm. then the second step is to get to this number from this number. So I need to do these extra two um, math additions, subtractions, yeah. to th these math operations, and eventually you get to the answer. So these two techniques, creating a simple equation and also creating a step-by-step -step structure for more complex cases, uh, I think they're vital for, for you to do what you said, which is structuring the whole problem up front before you even multiply anything. Yeah, I think that this is this is a good point that you're bringing. Uh, this is something that once most candidates know that they need to do, they can start practicing it. Mm -hmm. And it is, as you said, the, mo the greatest reason why candidates fail, the largest or the most frequent reason for failure. So it is really important that candidates know that they should do this and that they should be practicing it specifically, right? Yeah. Uh, one thing that I would like to emphasize, because candidates say that they understand this, but then they, they go on to practice and do it all differently, is when you're structuring step-by-step -step or equations, uh, at least in your practice, but also when solving the case itself, 
don't put any numbers in it. Yeah. This is yeah. I need to get this off my chest because yeah, it's people, not obvious. Agree. People forget about this all the time and they'll start putting numbers in and numbers in and numbers in. So in the end, they can't discuss the method with the interviewer and the interviewer can't follow what they're doing because what is this two that you're dividing by right now? What is this other seven that you're talking about? Is it days of the week or is it, you know, number of uh, machines or whatever? Yeah. Uh, okay. Let me try to guess why people don't listen to you when you say that. Okay. I think it's very intuitive for us. To, oh, uh, days of the year. Oh, it's 365. I'm going to put it right here. Yeah. Right? Uh, and I don't think there's a huge problem with doing that specifically. Mm -hmm. uh, the problem is when you start doing it with everything and then it gets messy. Yeah. So, oh, there's like 24 hours in a day and then there's like uh, eight hours per day that an employee works. And then uh, also like the average person is, I don't know how tall, but whatever. And then you start doing it with other numbers and you start mixing the variables and the numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you get lost, your interviewer gets lost. You put numbers without putting the variables. Mm -hmm. So you like five minutes later, don't remember if that number was, uh, I don't know, 30 days in the month or 30 something else. Yeah. Uh, so we, I think when we give this advice, like do a split separation of variables and data yeah. with the numbers later, we're very rigorous with that. And a lot of people are like, oh, you don't need to be so dogmatic about it. Yeah. And it's true. You don't. However, if you don't, if you're not as dogmatic about it in your practice, chances are you're going to be even less so in your interviews yeah. when you're more stressed and you haven't built the habit of separating variables from numbers in your practice. So in your, in your interviews, you tend to mix things together mm -hmm. and... And then you make mistakes. So yeah. it's kind of like those those things that they teach you in the army that you're like, oh, you don't need to be so rigorous about, you know, uh, disarming your rifle or whatever they do in the army. I, I don't know because <laughs> I haven't served, but whatever they do yeah. in the army. But you know those things like <laughs> yeah. like safety protocols with guns, like, oh, yeah. don't point your gun to anyone. Yeah. And then there was that Hollywood guy that killed some actress because... Yeah. He thought the gun was loaded with uh, fake uh, ammo. Yeah. So these these rules exist for a reason. Yes, you can break them sometimes, but uh, when, yeah, but you, you you shouldn't break them often, especially when you're practicing. Yeah. Because otherwise, the practice has no reason to be right. Yeah, I love uh, I love I tend to love CEO sayings, generic CEO sayings. So I'm gonna like throw those, one of those them right there. Words and yeah. phrases. Yeah, yeah, all those that come from Albert Einstein <laughs> and Mark Twain. And <laughs> one of them is that you practice at 150 percent, so that in the when you need to use the technique, you deliver at 100. Yeah. Instead of practicing at 100, so that you deliver at uh, 70 percent. Yeah. Th there's also that Navy SEAL saying that like you don't rise to the level of your expectations, you fall to the level of your practice. Yeah. So I think, mm -hmm. yeah, you have to be extra rigorous with that when you're practicing. Otherwise, you're very prone to mistakes. Yeah.